coming in, girls. We got someone laying here by the door. Corey, are you blocking the door, girl? Okay, welcome to Gold's Gardens and Healthy Tips. And it is January 11th, I think, today. Hi, Angel. Here's Snickers. Hey, Snickers. Bernie, you gonna say hi? Luce, you gonna say hi? And Clarabelle, with your big, beautiful ears. So um, it is January 11th, I think, and we're heading into cold weather now. Uh, we've had a really mild winter so far, and now um, winter has become upon us. So I came out to refill water, and I thought I would just kind of go over uh, what we do about the animal's water in the winter and other winter preparatories because we're going to be moving into some sub-zeros, it looks like, for a week, and then... Um, just like single digits during the day. So I kind of let their water thing go empty this morning so that I could um, talk about how I do this and So that's what we're gonna do first. We'll take care of the goats and then we'll move on So we use these plug-in water pails in the winter We've got one here and they do have a nice chew proof cord on them And we just feed it under the fence there and then it goes and gets plugged in um, over on the outlet there and then on the inside, we've got another one over here. And uh, this one, got it hung up on the wall. Um, that's one thing that I have found is, I put this type of device on here that, you know, you can spin it up and down. I don't know the correct name for it, but anyways, I like to use this because sometimes when they're kicking them, kicking around in here and jumping around. Uh, if it's just a regular hook, they can dislodge it from the wall. Also, you could use a carabiner, but that's what I have there right now. So we're going to clean out that water. I do this every morning um, or in the evening, whichever it seems to need. I add water. Um, but today I'm going to clean the buckets out and because it's going to get really cold and I don't want to do it when it's sub-zero. And then just to show you too how I do that, because it's a little bit inconvenient. There's a... Um, cord right there it gets fed underneath this wall right here because the electrical outlet is on the other side where the bunnies are right now so anyways we'll go outside here first and Oriole's just found her little sunspot over here that she can chill out in in another little pile of straw hey angel so we'll go out here and do this one first and then we'll move to the inside so the inconvenience with the outdoor water is that um, these get dirty, you know, from them drinking in on my stuff. And so what I like to do is, I got help here from Orion Snickers. Um, so what I like to do here is just take a paper towel that has like some vinegar on it when, when I clean them out and just wipe them out, get all the residue out. This one actually is not bad right now, but that's what I do. The other thing is, is that, um, and I'll show you on the inside, but a lot of times this will have water in it, and I don't want to unplug all my apparatus here because it, you know, it's just inconvenient to um, drain them out. So what I'll do is I'll just take a, a bucket like this and unclip it and then dump the used water into the bucket to waste it and then um, wipe it out and then fill it up. So I'll show you that on the inside because there's some on the inside. So let me grab my water and... Okay, so pretending that I had just dumped that out and wiped it out, then I'll just reattach it back up here and um, fill it up in this way. And <clears throat> there is some, um, <laughs> there's some garlic bulbs in there because I'm giving the goats some garlic right now just to help clean them out and just for their immune system because it's cold out. And I Okay, so the inside here, um, same thing. This one's got some water in it, but I see that somebody got a poo poo in there, which happens. I always watch for that. I don't want to leave that in there because that could be could make them sick. So then, um, Oreo is being such a helper. She's always a helper, aren't you, Oreo? So then, what I'll do is I will uh, take this off. Get this 
off and then um, just dump the water in here. Mario, don't chew my good gloves. Okay, and it smells garlicky. <laughs> Wipe it out with the paper towel again. and it gets kick up when they're kicking things around in there and and I get my clean water and dump in there and I'll just waste this outside okay so nice clean water in there cut the garlic bulbs in there I bring the water out from the house in the winter and um, what I do is I have a, um, a clean bucket that I keep just hanging right in the garage that I actually fill the water up in the house with. And then I dump that water into our green buckets here that we haul out here. That way the blue bucket that's hanging in the garage doesn't ever go out to the barn. So I'm not bringing barn stuff into our kitchen. So that's what I do with the goat water. And then... I'll just leave the waste bucket that I used in the barn here. My gloves back on. So that's the water. And um, like I said, a little bit inconvenient, but it works. We haven't had um, a problem with these not, not keeping the water from being frozen, both outside and inside. So that's pretty cool. Um, Lucy, hello. Um, okay. So the other thing is, when it's really cold out, I just, like this morning, it was pretty pretty darn cold out, so I didn't open both of the barn doors. I just opened the one barn door. And that way, just letting a little bit less cold air um, coming in. And then what I'll do if it's really sub-zero, sometimes I just won't open the doors at all, and I'll just keep them inside. I don't like to do that because they go a little nutso, and I just think it's good for them to have the sunlight and everything. But if it's really, really cold, obviously, I'm going to try to keep the warmth on the inside. <clears throat> so that's what I do as far as that. And then inside here, um, for their bedding, I have straw down on. I, I have a, the aspen flakes down first that helps absorb liquid really well and moisture. And then I have the straw bedding down. And so I'll make some extra beds for them. Like I know where they sleep. Some of them prefer to sleep up on the benches and then I know if they sleep on the ground where they sleep, so <clears throat> I'll put extra straw where they sleep, like in the corners here, underneath the benches, and then over here, somebody always likes to lay over here and underneath here. And that way, um, they have extra thicker straw there. But I don't like put thick straw in the middle here because that's where they seem to stand and do their, um, their pottying and pooping. And that way, I'm constantly, every day, scraping that up and throwing and then covering over again but that doesn't um, lead to so much waste from right in the middle there because that's kind of just their standing area and if they're going to lay down they go to these <clears throat> more sheltered areas so um, I will give them more bedding as needed but I have I think I have enough down right now for for them to lay in make sure that their mineral and baking soda is filled so that they're getting good minerals for um, good nutrition, why, you know, the weather always takes more of a toll on the body. So we have three mineral soda containers, one there. And then um, underneath the bench here, I just refilled these yesterday, gave them fresh. I try to freshen them up once a week because when they get old and stale and they get kind of damp, then they don't like them. And one under there. And the reason I have them under the bench is because it seems like no matter where I put them, they poop in them. They get poop in them. And I've tried hanging them in many different places. This is one that I have hanging now. It seems to be working out okay. Um, but I started putting them underneath there, and that's the cleanest I've been able to keep them. So that's what I do with them. And I like to have them in a container where I can totally empty them out and clean them out. So that is our um, mineral and um, water setup and extra bedding setup. Um, let's see. So that's the goatees pretty much. Um, I'm going to go in here. Excuse me, Oreo. Stay there, girl. Okay, this is our little hallway area. 
Um, I like to just keep a little bit of hay here just in case I need it for something. But this is our little container I have that I give them the, you know, they each get just a little handful of grain in their each individual bowl at night when I bring them in. And it's empty now. I emptied it last night. So I'm going to fill that up so that I don't have to mess with that when it's so cold out. And then this, I put sunflower, black sunflower seeds in that I give them about probably three times a week. I'll give them a little bit of that on their food. It's good copper. And I'm going to fill that up as well. Um, this is for the rabbits. They're their water I keep in here which is going to be useless pretty soon because it's probably going to be too cold and I'll have to haul it from every day out from the house but normally I keep that filled so I can just pour it from there and um, I brought a radio out I think I'm going to put a radio up for them because that way if um it's where they're stuck in here all the time then I put the radio on with some soothing music and that just you know helps to calm everybody when they got to be stuck inside so I'm going to fill those food things up now and then we'll get the goaties um, ready for the cold weather. Okay, so what I do with their food mix here is, um, and this was suggested to me by our veterinarian, um, I mix it. This is their feed. It's Nature's Grown um, Organics. Nature's Grown Organics um, oats. oats. So what I end up doing is I mix them half and half. So the feed is a combination of goat feed and I'll put um, half of each and just kind of layer it in here. And I put a little bit of diatomaceous earth in just to help keep parasites down. Okay, so I keep the food locked in these snap containers, all the food, including the chicken food, um, because I don't want to have a problem like with mice coming in, and I think once they find it, then it, it'll become their home. So that's worked out pretty good. Okay, so I got the food filled up, and I got the black sunflower feeds filled up, and I just keep this small container in here because that way if the goats would ever get <clears throat> um, in this area here, then they would not be able to get into a large amount of grain, and I keep it up on that shelf. Um, I would not keep it on this shelf because they could get there, but um, they would not be able to get in and eat so much grain that they would get sick. So that's kind of my reason for keeping it here. And um, just also so that I don't have all the bags of grain like clogging up my space in here. So that will last quite a long time because I only give them a little bit of time. At least through this cold spell, it looks like it's going to be about 10 days of pretty significant cold. So I don't have to be going through extra work to get that. Okay, I also have goat coats for the goats, and I don't always use these. Um, these are the ones that I have. Houseware um, goat coat. I think I got them from horse.com. They also have them on Amazon. Um, and I think that um, Premier One has them as well. And um, <clears throat> I like them because they're they have a nice waterproof coating on them. And then um, the underneath side is, is um, also like a nylon waterproof. They're thicker. <clears throat> they have a reflective thing on them. So you can see them if it's dark out. And then they have nice thick Velcro. Um, this one goes underneath the neck, as you can see in the picture here. And then there's one that goes underneath the body. They have straps for the legs. I never put them on. The goats hate them. So, um, Maybe your goats won't hate them, but mine do, so I have not put those on. They come in different sizes. The only problem is, is like, um, there's such a size difference between, this is the medium size, it's 16 inch, and then this is the large size, and that's 20 inch, and then this is the extra large size. So um, some of my goats are pretty round, and they could probably just wear, like, it's Clarabelle and, and Fern. Like, they could wear the large 
but they're so round that I had to end up getting them extra large last year and then they're too big. Um, so it's just kind of a deal. So I just use them <clears throat> when it's really extreme cold and they really do help. I don't like to use them all the time because I think it's important for the goats to get acclimated to the weather. And, um, but I also don't want them to be freezing and they really do help. Like they don't like to get them put on, but once they do get them put on, they're just fine with them. And, and, um, you can feel underneath them and they're really keep their body pretty warm. So they do help. The one thing that you have to watch for is that they don't get either tangled up or what can tend to happen if, cause, because I don't use those straps is that, um, this can flip back and sometimes they like to try to pull them off each other right when they get them on. So you just have to keep an eye on them. I would not put them on if we were gonna be gone or something like that and leave them on. Um, but you know, I work from home so I'm able to watch and make sure everything's okay. So that is our little goatee setup for the winter. All right, so the chickens have uh, two water, one outside and one inside that's heated. And I haul water out here from the house again. So. Just find it convenient to use my little wagon and these buckets. Now, um, probably once a week or whatever, I do take the outdoor water can and bring it up um, the house and, and scrub it up real good. All right, so I use this to fill up the outside one. <clears throat> hey, chicky girls. And this is their outdoor water. And like I said, I like to take it up and scrub it about once a week, but today I did already do that a few days ago and I'm just gonna fill it up today. And then um, this is the water heater plate. And so the water sits on there. And so far we've done well with no frozen water. This has a twist, a twist on the bottom that helps to seal it, so it has a slow drip. And it doesn't look too icky or anything, otherwise I would take it up and I would scrub it out. out pretty fast so you want to seal it and I should have got the other water bucket in so I'm gonna grab the other water bucket and put some more in there. This is my first winter having chickens and I'm just so surprised these girls are outside yet. I'm, I'm thinking and hoping that they know when they need to go in. And then you just twist it and then it will um, kind of seal and it'll just have a slow drip. All right, and then on the inside, on the inside we have this water. I'm not gonna change this one out right now because it's still got water in it. And I mix some, some electrolyte, a little apple cider vinegar, like a couple tablespoons for that container and some probiotic in the appropriate amounts. I believe that's a three gallon container. And I usually fill it up about two gallons because I have to carry it out here like upside down and it splashes around. So I learned the hard way that I don't want to fill it up all the way. So I take that in the house, scrub it up, fill the water in, put the probiotic and the apple cider vinegar and vinegar in it. Apple cider vinegar, I'm sorry. And, um, probiotic and electrolyte in it and I'm doing that just to, to like help them stay healthy this winter and then um, I will um, bring those pieces out and then you just have to keep it upside down put the bottom plate on whip it around and sit it on here you get a little bit of spillage but it's okay and then that plugs in right here and I also put up this heat plate for them 
and it is warm. It's supposed to be safe and not certifier or anything, like a heat lamp. Like, I can lay my hand on there, but yet it's giving off warmth. So we just put that in there so they can stand by that if they choose to. And, um, you know, just a little bit of help. I don't know how this is going to go because we haven't had chickens in the winter. This is our first year. We did insulate this box really well. Um, so we're hoping, and we have good ventilation in there as well. So we're hoping that it will be good for them. The other thing I'm going to do because it's getting cold now is I'm going to fill up their feed in here. And, um, you know, there's not really a whole lot else to do for the chickies, I guess. Um, what I want to do outside here is... I want to make like a little, almost like a little pup tent type of thing. Um, just a frame that has mylar plastic on each side, like a little tent to put in here and then um, put a bunch of straw on the bottom and that way they can go in there if it's chilly or winter and still pick around. Look at them. <laughs> and still pick around in that straw and have the um, sunshine on them through the, my through the plastic. I said mylar, I didn't really mean mylar, I meant like plastic. And it would be kind of like a little greenhouse type of thing. So I did put the straw in here from the waste from the goat straw and they really like to pick around in there. So I put some um, chicken scratch in there and I get the same brand of organics chicken scratch as I do the goat food and the organics chicken layer feed so it's all the same brand it seems to be doing really well but they've everybody's been healthy the chickens are still laying eggs uh this winter yet so i'm just going to keep with what seems to be working well so that and the um chicken scratch which has corn and oats in it so that's giving them some warmth and then i give them the um the black larva and i scatter that out for them as well so I'm going to go fill this feed up and then they'll be all set. Um, and I'm just hoping they're going to do okay when it's so cold out. But we'll keep an eye on them and we'll, we'll watch them and make sure. Okay, and here's the little bunnies. Their little winter hideout. I left them in here today. Hey kids, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing today, huh? You guys stayed inside today, didn't you? I like to put them out because I like them to get the sun and everything, but pretty darn cold out today so we just left them in here today and um they're doing good um I put down some more straw in here for them as well um I'll just load them up with some hay again I'm gonna put some more water in their hot water so here's their hot water bowl warm water bowl and that just gets plugged in right up here as well it's got a chew proof and um that's about all I need to do for these little guys so um I put some extra straw in their little hutch here and they were sitting by their little warm plate here, so that's working out really good. So we just got them some more water and food, some hay, and they're gonna be just fine. I checked the thermometer, and it is about 21 degrees Fahrenheit in here, so um, I'm feeling pretty good about that, and I'm assuming that the chicken coop is probably about the same since we insulated that too, so I think they're gonna be just fine. It is, I don't know, it's like 12 below with the 18 below wind chill. So we've had colder, we've had much colder, but um, I'm feeling pretty good about how everything's working out here. I just wanted to add, um, for those of you who live in cold climates like we do, and if you're just planning on building your facility for your goats, I'm really glad that we insulated. It was a lot more work and it was more expense, but this is why, because it's still... 21 degrees in here and it's um, double digit minus outside and it just is so worth it to not have to worry about them like that. Um, so if you can afford to do that and uh, if you're building for cold climate, I would suggest doing that and making sure you put good ventilation in as well. Um, and if you didn't see our video about our barn build, there is a video about the barn build where we have pictures and stuff to show how we did that. So. Just wanted to add that.